The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. This medical program heard from 7 to 7.30 each Saturday right here on WSBR 740 AM is brought to you by the Adult and Geriatric Center under the medical direction of geriatrician Dr. Andy Mencia. You know, we had Dr. Mencius here. We had someone call in, and they wanted to know, of course, what's on the schedule. We always have people doing that, and I try to tell them. And we told her, she said, you mean mm-hmm. you mean 7, 7 o'clock? She said, no, we have a treat today at 6.30 this morning. Whoa, yeah. so thank you for coming in early. <laughs> My pleasure. And, and I always want to know what we're going to be talking about. First, I want to talk about Richard. Okay, My Richard. My friend Richard. Okay, your friend uh, Richard. There are many, many people out there trying to... Uh, stop gambling, uh, stop smoking, stop drug abuse, uh, stop alcoholism. And, you know, one of the things that I tell my patients when I get them into a program, any program for anything, is that you will not see me today and disappear from me. You you know, we're going to work together on this. This is going to be a, a path to follow. And... You know, it's good for the patient to know that you can always depend on your doctor and he will never judge you for failure. You know, failure, uh, conflict is an opportunity that God gave us to become a better person. Some people see conflict and failure as I'm done, I'm finished, I'm no good. And God don't give you failure. God doesn't give you anything for you to feel bad about. God gives you opportunities in life. You are always, a, a, any path has a fork somewhere. And you follow and you say, I'm still on the right path, and you continue that way. Or you went the wrong way, and you have to find your way back to the right path. Oh, so, isn't that nice? What a nice way to tell somebody that they've so, fallen yeah. off. <laughs> so, Rachel, <laughs> let's deal with the conflict. You know what Yogi Berra said about the fork in the road? You said when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Well, well we're going to deal through this together as friends. You Thank know, you. We started together, and we're going to continue together. And um, I know you have uh, given into the temptation of the cigarettes again. I have. And uh, and now you are not doing it part-time, but you're doing it full-time. No, I'm not full-time. I'm oh, Well, okay. I, I think any time is full-time, really. Absolutely. Yeah. One cigarette is full-time cigarettes. Yes, uh, yes I did, Anita, yes, I did fall off the wagon. <laughs> yes, you did fall off the wagon. And I think, you know, it's an opportunity for us to show the world out there because, you know, I see the people that... Uh, through my em- my my uh, website and my email, and they've been even calling me. People, one lady from Germany, she calls me. Really? Yes, wow. and she said, you know, this had been one of the best segments, and she'd been following along. She looked for somebody up there for hypnotherapy, just like you did, and she did it a week after you, and she's still hanging on. And I told her, you know, keep in touch with me. I want to hear from you. Well, I was I was good for a few weeks. Well, two weeks is... Um, no, I think it was three weeks you were... Yeah, no, nearly no. two weeks. Was because it two he, weeks? Yeah, well, last, oh, had well, last he Wednesday. Had he had one his cigarette, yeah. that's all. Uh, exactly. So we can do it. We can still do it. And all the services in the center are still there for you. Thank you. And we're going to get together and we're going to... As long as you want to. That's the key. Well, the moment you say, you know, this, I don't want to do this it. This is the but third and Messiah final time me. I'm, I'm It's not going to work. Right. Hmm. Yeah. You That's have a good to point. Yeah, you so you're not doing it for your husband or your mother. You're doing it for you. You, don't, you, you have, have to, to do, do it for you, yourself. no matter what it is. Right. Well, that brings us into exercise, doesn't it? It brings us into exercise, healthy living. Uh, I am so, so um, humble uh, that we have, the, uh, we have a guest in town. Uh, he didn't come to the show because uh, he has some engagement. Uh, but we have one of the pioneers of taekwondo. Uh, Grandmaster Park Yong Soo, uh, who is visiting us. He's uh, originally from South Korea, 
and it's one of the few uh, pioneers that's still alive. You know that uh, invented taekwondo, and he's. So I mean, he's an older gentleman. Uh, he, yes, and a lot of the people that work at my office at the center, they see his picture because I have his picture there. You have seen it, <laughs> and they say, "Is that the guy on the picture? Is that the guy on the picture?" I say, "Yes, that's him." So uh, we have the honor yesterday of having lunch with him. I apologize to him for being so busy in my profession. But he treats me like his own kid, his own son, and he understands that this is, you know, this is my profession, and uh, I support and I love Taekwondo. I love the original uh, Taekwondo that the founder of Taekwondo gave to him, and he had traveled the the, the world basically spreading the the philosophy of what Taekwondo is all about. And can you oh, take a moment and share that? What is the philosophy of Taekwondo? The philosophy of Taekwondo is um, a, it's a martial art that originated in South Korea. Now, you have to understand the history of South Korea. South Korea was oppressed by Japan for many, many years. Uh, being an oppressed country, uh, when they finally obtained their independence after World War II, um, they have no guidance. It's like Afghanistan, you know, trying to come together as a country. There was no guidance in society. So this young fellow that was in jail in Japan, a uh, very highly educated guy, um, uh, his name was uh, Che Hong He, and he came up with, uh, he joined the army to defend his country, to put South Korea back together. At that point, I guess the Korean Peninsula, because it was one Korea. And he came up with the idea, if I can develop a martial art that can give us uh, patriotism, that make us feel good about who we are, that make us uh, strive to become better, a better society, then that would be my contribution to, at that point he wanted to do it for his peninsula, for his country, for Korea. But uh, it was such a uh, perfect system that he created, if we can call it that, that it spread like wildfire throughout the world. And he became a general in Korea. And through the martial art, he was teaching Korean people that, hey, we can be proud of who we are, and if we go that extra mile, we can become somebody. Uh, mm. And uh, we have a history. that Our history didn't start when we got invaded by, Jam by Japan, and it didn't end there. We had a history prior to that. So he started through the martial art teaching the history of uh, the Korean people the language of the Korean people, the philosophy of the Korean people. Hmm. And if you look at Korea today, it's, it's almost a superpower. They have gone from third world countries so fast to building one of the best cars are coming from South Korea, television are coming from South Korea, all kind of uh, uh, inventions uh, for, for in the field of, uh, of science, <clears throat> different science. Uh, had been, you know, had been coming from this country. So these are people that strive, and I have visited uh, both North and South Korea in several occasions. And it's interesting to see how South Korea have um, evolved in, so, in so, such a short period of time. And a very open society. Uh, before, you know, most Asian country, uh, they try to stay pure. We are only Asian. We don't want to mix with the outside world. That's why the Chinese wall was built, trying to keep the oh, purity of the race. That. Absolutely. Oh. So Koreans have become an open society, but they still remember who they are. They don't lose their identity. So it teaches people about the, the indomitable spirit that we should have to be whoever we are, whether I you want to be a good wife or a good husband. You want to be a good son or a good father. <clears throat> uh, it teaches it teaches you about perseverance, and that's what Richard will be learning. What is the if we trying to achieve something, you're gonna get good, you're gonna have conflicts in life, but those who persevere will come through. The indomitable spirit. Indomitable spirit. I love that. That's Absolutely. you. That's and it gives you. you that self esteem. That it makes no difference that I was born in the ghetto. 
or that I was born without books or without electricity to open a book and study, I can still become a doctor. That, you know, I don't, you know, my father might not have the money to pay for my books, but I can go out there and shine shoes and make enough money to get my books to make it through what I want to do. So, you know, it teaches us to be humble. And in my office, um, I think we were talking in another uh, program, one of my patients came in and he saw me cleaning the windows, remember? And he said, oh my God, Dr. Messier, are you cleaning your own windows? I say, yeah, it's, I'm part of the team. We are all a team here. I'm the first one to, that came to work this morning and the window needed to be clean. I'm not gonna wait for somebody to tell them to do it. So it teaches us to be a, a humble individual. And I tell you, a lot of people, they ask me, you know, Dr. Messia, how did you accomplish so much so early in your life? You know, you are a pilot, uh, you are a doctor, you are a psychologist, you are a writer, you are a speaker, you do Taekwondo, you, you know, I, I, I'm a senior master in Taekwondo. How you accomplish all of this? And it's through those principles that I learned from the founder of Taekwondo through him personally and through his writing. And I have passed it on to other students uh, throughout the world. I travel to Nepal, all of uh, Latin America, Europe. And when I travel and teach, I love teaching the philosophy of the art to make sure that, that we don't lose that part. So having Grandmaster Park Yong Su here wow. is, a, is, a, so is an understand. honor. What an honor it is to have him here, you know. And uh, people like to uh, praise you and and thank you after you die. I love praising and thanking people when they are around us. Absolutely. And also we have um, Mr. and Mrs. Cisterna that came from Argentina. Uh, Mrs. Cisterna, Victoria Cisterna, she's a second degree black belt, and her nan Cisterna, he's going for a sixth degree black belt. Uh, and, and they're not young. They are. They are. I mean, they're twenties, yeah. but they're twenties. No, thirties. Uh, no, I'm sh- Mrs. Cisterna is in her twenties, oh. and uh, Mr. Cisterna is in his thirties. Oh, they are young. They are young kids. And and you know we hear but this. But those are the those are to me those are my kids. You know. It's, but but you this know. is my question. So you you are not teaching this now. So if someone were such as myself, if were to go to find, do all Taekwondo places are they all good? I mean. No, no, no. It's just like all doctors are no good. All all hospitals you know? are no good. And the way to know it, you have to educate yourself. You have to, you know. Um, they are, especially in our country here. So when Taekwondo was created, uh, I remember being in Hawaii and we would sit and wait for the founder of Taekwondo when he was good and ready because he was always traveling to send us a piece of paper that say that now you are a first degree black belt or a second degree black belt. I remember wait, waiting for my fourth degree black belt almost a full year. And I couldn't put on that degree until the founder of Taekwondo <laughs> would send us the certificate. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, people that practice, you know, then Taekwondo spread to other, throughout the United States. And, be, you know, some bad masters and bad instructors, they say, let me go to a printing shop and I create my own certificate. Wow. And people in America, we are so naive. <laughs> as long as it's a piece of paper that says something, we take it. I have a... I went to a conference in California, and they gave me a uh, PhD in Chinese medicine. So I say we want to honor you to become a doctor in Chinese medicine. And so I, you know, I say thank you. And then I look at the certificate and I say, I don't want to call myself this, you know, because you did not. I didn't take do. The- yeah, I, I didn't do any training, any testing, anything. I don't want this, you know, so it's there, it's on a drawer in my, in my, <laughs> in my office, but it's not something that I, that I use uh, because didn't come from, from the right uh, source. Yes. You know, and there are many sources out there, and many of them can be fake, and you have to, you know, find the right source. And a good instructor, a good Taekwondo instructor, will be a person that will teach you how to stretch, how to warm up, and the th- kind of thing we're gonna talk about today, what's the proper way of exercising, regardless of your age. 
Uh, they will teach you how to stretch, how to warm up, you know, warming up, warming down, and the training, and endurance, and so on and so far. How to punch, how to kick, how to make that punch more effective without uh, misusing your energy uh, so that you have enough endurance to keep fighting if you have to defend yourself or if you want to run or if you want to accomplish something. But it also teach will teach you a good instructor uh, what is a uh, good moral values? What does it, what are good virtues a person should have? What is uh, to be disciplined? What is to have indomitable spirit? What is to have self-esteem? Um, they will give you, they will work with you in developing you as a person. And uh, throughout my years of teaching Taekwondo, <clears throat> I remember once having twins coming to me. And um, when I first relocated from Hawaii, I was in uh, Washington, D.C., in Arlington, Virginia. And they bring me twins to, to be trained, and the mother say, can I put my kids to train with you? They are twins. Now, this one, he's very shy. You tell him to go and do something, the first thing he do, he start crying. And this one cannot control himself. He's all over. They want to get him out of school, and um, I don't know if he's have ADD, uh, if there's something wrong with him. They ask me to go and take him to a psychologist, that maybe something is wrong with this kid, and completely opposite but twins. And uh, I say, oh, I would be happy to work with them. You know, let me give it a shot. And the one that was very shy developed so much self-esteem. That he, you know, he was an A student, and he would go into a competition. He became a champion. And the wild one dropped so much to a humble level that he was always there for his brother. He was always there supporting his brother. At one point, he stopped practicing, but was always there supporting the brother to make sure the brother continued to practice. And then he came back into practice. And the mother was the one that came back to me and said, you know, Master, I don't know how you did it, but I have so wonderful kids now. And when they came to you and who they are now, and I never get them any medication, I never took them to a psychiatrist or to a psychologist, just with what you have done in this little place, you know. And, and, and that, I mean that, so, <clears throat> so how do you, so you have it in your nature, it sounds like to me. It's your nature that you were trained in, but you have a nature for this. So you're saying that there will be masters who, who want to do this, but maybe they just don't have what it takes to do it. They don't have so, what it takes. So, they don't have the proper training. Uh, there are people out there that, uh, just like medicine, just like any other profession, that uh, will look at what is it for me. Right. And, you know, when I travel, I, you know, this, you know, this humble guy, Grandmaster Park Yon Su, you know, he travels sometimes and uh, he's such a humble individual that he's, you know, I've seen other, other grandmasters that, that are not uh, his category, but I, you know, I have come in contact with them. And they will flat out ask you, like, how much money am I going to make there? How mm -hmm. many students do you have? It's a worth my while for me to do this. And then you have people like him that are the founder that had basically traveled the world and we should be catering to people like him. And it's never a question in his mind. It's like he doesn't care to come and help one person or a hundred person. He's always there to, to, to fulfill. And, you know, uh, and that's my philosophy. You I know, know it is. If I can you help one like person, that. I'm happy. I know you're very <coughs> special, but can I ask you how long will he be here? Do I get an opportunity <coughs> to meet him? Uh, he, well, he will be here until uh, Monday morning. He will be leaving Monday morning. And where is he? Is he staying with you? He's staying in Fort Lauderdale because um, uh, Mr. Cisterna will be testing. So uh, he's staying in Fort Lauderdale. And, um, that would be very interesting for me. I would love to meet him. I don't know I how to do that. So is it him. Sunday that he would be? Sunday we'll be, we'll be testing. Um, and, and, and when he's testing, but is that's not open to people to come, is it? Is of course, it? yeah. yeah. Where is he doing that? Uh, they can call my office. Uh, we can provide the address to anybody that's so interested. So I mean, he's doing it like a, not a, a private a, home. A school. A school. A school, yeah. We have to go to a dojo. It have to be a formal dojo for do a six-degree level testing. 
Yeah. I, I would be fascinated to go and see this. This is so it's thrilling for me to hear you. And I guess my next question was, am I too old to, to start that's this? A, that's a great question. And I, I remember when I was teaching in New York City, uh, there was a, uh, a student from India. He was 68 years old. And what impressed me was not his age, but the enthusiasm that I saw on that guy at the end of the class. And he was so alert. He was like hung, so hungry to learn. Yeah. And he would be the first one to get dressed. And he knew he was a low ranking. So he would go all the way at the back of the class. And say, all the high ranking is going to be in the front. that had to be at the back. And he would be at the back, but he would be like stretching his neck you know, like, uh, uh, trying to see what was being said and what was being done so that he can learn and, and move on. And I, that's how I went to talk to him and ask him, you know, his age. And no, there's no age limit. That's why, you know, when we talk today about today's topic of exercise, it's exercise for the uh, boomers and at any age. Um, my kids started exercising before they started walking. You know, I taught my kids to to exercise before they even started walking. So I believe that if, you know, if you know what to do. Now, I couldn't take my kids at, uh, when they were months old and make them do flips or anything like that. But I would teach them how to stretch, how to move their arm and how to do it. Being a doctor is, was easier for me. I wouldn't encourage you to do something that you don't know what you're doing with your kids. You have to go to a formal class and and I can teach people how to exercise a baby. And I used to have pregnant uh, mom that would come and train. Mm -hmm. And what's the benefit of exercising when a woman is pregnant? Where the stronger your abdominal muscles are, the easier your delivery is gonna be. And the less fat you're gonna have accumulated after you give birth to your child. So we can exercise from birth all the way to any age. And I have a patient that came to me, and that's why the, the topic got inspired. A patient came to me and she said to me, oh, Dr. Mencia, I cannot exercise because my cardiologist told me that I have orthostatic hypotension, which is when you have blood pressure, that when you stand up, your blood pressure drops significantly, you will feel dizzy and you will fall down and faint or near pass out, near passing out. So it's very serious, and uh, there are certain things we can do for orthostatic hypertension uh, with and without medication. So I told her, well, do you want to hear my side of the story? And she said, sure. I say, well, you can exercise that you have limitations. You cannot exercise like I do. And you cannot exercise, let's say, like um, uh, my student, Hernan from that is here, that's a world champion, and he can jump and do things, you know. So even if you have orthostatic hypo, uh, hypotension, you can still exercise. You cannot do ups and down movement. You have to stay still, but you can take dumbbell and, and um, exercise your arm, and you can take some weight on your ankle and exercise your lower extremity. So as long as you are not standing and sitting, you can still exercise. There are certain limitations to exercise when we should know exercise, and we're going to go through that hopefully on the second half hour of the show. Uh, but anybody and everybody should be able to do some form of activity. That's the take-home message. That you know, if you look at how, you know, we have to be be able to criticize ourselves as a as an individual and as a society. And uh, I, they just did a piece of me on Deco Drive. They did. Yeah, they oh just did it on Deco Drive. You can go on YouTube. Oh, it's I want to see that. Deco Drive visit Lexus. And wait, wait, they, Deco Drive what? Visit. They went to visit yeah. Lexus, uh, JM Lexus. <laughs> and they did a, a piece of me, and I look at you know, oh my uh, gosh. and the humbleness just overwhelmed me. and say, oh. I, I don't know, <laughs> but I look at that with a with a critical eye, and I say, you know, as a society, we are so comfortable. You get in your car, you know, you don't use a uh, shift gear anymore. Everything is mechanical. You know, you turn the car. You don't even have to turn the key anymore. You just press a button, 
and, I know. and you can get close to the door, the door opens for you. Uh, so many, so so much comfort out there that it makes us so uh, prone to become overweight. Okay, and we're going to stop that. We're going to be going to carry on after the news, and we'll be right back with Dr. Mencia for another whole half hour. This is so precious and so fantastic, and and I guess I'm convinced to do taekwondo, but I have to figure out how to do this. <laughs> no, I've been wanting to ever since you talked about it, but I don't live close to you, and I'd have to figure out what to do. But nine five four. Oh, oh yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> four eight okay. nine one three four five. We are open Monday through Saturday. <laughs> we are open today. We got the flu shot, everybody. Okay, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Wonderful World of Wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. Be sure to tune in each Saturday morning from 7 to 7.30 right here on WSBR 740 AM. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily...